Good evening and welcome to the next installment of Sagas. My name is Aaron McGill, your host. The theme for tonight's show is cool. This theme can be have many different meanings. In tonight's show, we'll cover a new plan for the future of snow days, new additions to the internship program, the future of a Topeka Bay store is unknown, and a local coffee shop has a different way of inviting customers into their store. We've already missed three days of school because of snow days, but we might not have had to miss three full days. For our first story, we've learned how the SEMA School District is investigating a new way of dealing with the schedule when winter weather strikes. Snow is cool, but snow days are cooler. Recently, school has been canceled due to poor road conditions early in the morning that improved later in the day. As a result, the Seaman School District is planning to implement a new type of snow day next school year. If we just had more time in the morning to let the sun come out, thaw things a little bit, let the road crews do their jobs, let our own maintenance crews have opportunity to clear some things off with our walkways and parking lots, and then we can have school. So yes, that option is being explored by uh, district leaders right now. Well, I do think it's a really good idea just because of the inclement weather that we've had. A lot of it is icy conditions and things like that. But in some instances, um, they can get the streets cleared and safe for everyone to arrive. And so that's the value in a late start, I believe. In theory, late starts should help limit the number of snow days, which will keep students from missing as many classes. Students like the idea. I think it would be good because a lot of the times um, it's bad in the morning, but then it gets better. So a late start would allow us to not have so many like missed classes since this year. We've missed a lot of even days and then we haven't like made them up because it's just not in the schedule too. With the current schedule, students sometimes miss the same classes multiple times without a chance to make them up. Despite some frustration, there is a reason the schedule works this way. So what happens if you come back to the day that it's supposed to be, then your calendar of events remains the same. Uh, you know, like things coming up in the next few weeks or months ahead, and then you, lo and behold you have another snow day, so you change it back again. So there's the value, and I've lived both, and the idea is coming back to the day it's supposed to be is by far the best as far as your ov maintaining your overall calendar and the structure of that calendar. When deciding whether or not to cancel school, the safety of transportation is always the biggest factor. Our buses are mostly okay, meaning they're big vehicles, they have a lot of weight, um, it's still the safest mode of transportation. So I don't worry as much about our buses, but I do worry about our teenage drivers and our staff that have to drive to work. Adding a delayed start comes with challenges, including families at home. Okay, if we're gonna delay start two hours, what impact does that have for our working class families? Moms and dads that have to still go to work at 7, 30, 8 o'clock. How does that impact their household routines? How does that impact our kids' routines? So all of that's being considered right now. Bus drivers are also taken into consideration. One of the biggest challenges we'll face, I think, with that late start is we still need to run about 100 routes uh, buses two hours later than normal. Some of our drivers might have a midday job that they go to that they planned on maybe after they get off the morning route. So we have to look at all of that uh, piece too and make sure we have the drivers in place to get our kids to school two hours later. A two hour delay is most common. My experience tells me that a two hour delay is pretty appropriate. That would mean then the high school and the middle school would start at about 9.55 instead of 7.55. Elementaries start an hour later, so they'll start at 10.55 instead of 8.55. And so everything sort of goes back two hours. Um, and, and in some cases, our kids will get off the bus, and if you have early lunch scheduled that day, you will go right into lunch. Mr. Monahan is in the process of developing a late start schedule for the high school. Yeah, so I think it would look like we would shave maybe 30 minutes off each of the four class periods. Um, we could also look at CALP as a possibility like we do with the afternoon assembly schedule. Um, but we would want lunch to fit in that normal time frame, so we'll just put a pencil that. We could get it fixed pretty easily, I think. This is the first time a late star will be implemented in the Seaman School District. I guess it just has never been done before. 
you know, sometimes that prohibits, prohibits change from happening. Well, we've just never done it that way before. And uh, we started asking the question why, and when we found out that there really wasn't a good reason why we haven't done it, um, we're, we're going to tackle that now. Hopefully, late starts will prevent the weather from causing students to miss as many classes next year. For our next story, we take a look at a new addition to our program. Seaman High School offers a unique opportunity for its students, a chance to get one-on-one -on -one experience with a mentor in a career field that interests them. Students who choose to enroll in this program will intern at a company twice a week for the duration of the semester. You know, you think you might know what a career looks like, but you really don't until you spend some time in that career. And if somebody's allowing, if a business is allowing um, you to come in, you should take advantage of that. And not very many people get that opportunity. I never got to see what a teacher does until I was doing my student teaching. Um, I'm sure a lot of people my age never really were able to get into a, a career and look at it for an extended period of time and, and not have any strings attached. So if you don't like that career, no problem. You don't have to do it. This, this whole thing is all about you. What, what do you want to do? That's why I think it's great. Kate Anderson is a senior who has just finished up his internship from last semester. During the program, Anderson interned at the WIBW television station with Melissa Bruner as his mentor. Well, so I, I took a lot of broadcast classes here at the high school for the last couple of years, and I realized that's something I wanted to do. So I wanted to go to WIBW, and this internship class was able to help me go there and realize that I'd want to try this in college and see if I could get a career in media. We had to do journal entries, which is you write about a week a week's worth of your internships each week and you talk about what you did and what you learned, new people you met, say say you worked with cameras that week and you write that all down so Mrs. Noble can see. This year I placed, um, let me think, about uh, almost 70 students in various internships. I had about 35 first semester and I believe I have maybe 30 this semester, so about 65 students. I have um, a young man who is a relay technician doing an internship in relay technician work at Evergy. Um, I've had students at WIBW, I have students at KSNT in broadcast journalism, meteorology, um, sports broadcasting, uh, you name it. I feel like we uh, I have students at HME right now who are wanting to learn about mechanical engineering. Um, There's just a variety of careers. A new program was started this year with the hopes of giving underclassmen a chance to shadow a career they're looking into. The Job Shadow Program allows students of all grades to get a closer look at different careers. The senior internship, or when I use the word internship, that's more of a, um, a, a, a longer experience. An internship lasts the entire semester and you go two days a week and it's only open to seniors but they have to apply right now during their junior year and then I get it all set up and they can choose a summer internship, they can choose a fall internship or a spring internship and those seniors who get accepted get a half credit elective, all right, and it's a class, it's built into their schedule. Unfortunately, it's only open to seniors. So I saw the need, how do I get my juniors and sophomores and freshmen students, how do I get them excited about careers that are available to them out in the community? I thought, let's do job shadows. Job shadows are a one-time visit, maybe about two hours long, and the student goes to that place and gets to see what that job looks like and gets to speak to a mentor and just gets to talk about what it takes to get a job in that career. So you can do one job shadow a semester. So if you're a second semester freshman and you do a job shadow now, you could potentially do a job shadow sophomore year, you could do two of them and two of them junior year in different careers. So then by the time you're a senior, hey, you're like, I know what I wanna do now and I wanna spend more time in this career. And that's when the internship comes into play. So at the end of the semester, we have to create a final presentation, which is just all your stuff that you've done, 
you put that into one presentation and it's a, just a slideshow and all your information like stories that I've done at WIBW that I edited and they have my name on it and they use it for the show I put a couple in there and then I put facts of what I did what I worked with who I worked with especially and then finally you get to present it in front of your mentor in front of the whole class it's a little nerve-wracking but it works out fine. Just had two students do their first job shadow last week. I had Alejandro Munoz who did a job shadow at uh, North Topeka Animal Clinic and I, he loved it. He, he said this is definitely what he wants to do and he was so grateful for the opportunity. So I think it's going to be a real uh, wonderful opportunity for our students. I highly recommend it because if you don't know what you want to do, just pick something that maybe interests you a little bit and then you can go do, the, the, do this internship and figure out if it's something you want to do because it gives you a hands-on in the career field opportunity. The internship program has been here at the high school for seven years. And with positive feedback and overall enjoyment from students, it does not look like we'll be leaving anytime soon. For our next story, we go outside of the walls of our school to our community. For almost a century, a family-owned business has been able to be very successful while being at Topeka, but the future of this store could be up in the air. We've always been about the picture-taking experience. So taking and preserving memories is really the root of Wolf's business and has been from 1924 to today. Since the late 20s, Wolf's camera has been a staple to the Topeka area. This family business allows customers to shop locally and receive in-person advice on anything cameras. We really have two divisions of our company today. So we are really, you know, we're not selling computers anymore. We're not selling big screen TVs anymore. Um, we're not selling audio gear anymore. So we're pretty well focused back on the picture taking experience. And because, you know, a few years ago we sold hundreds of cameras a day sometimes because everybody wanted a digital camera. Well today everybody walks around with a cell phone that makes a decent picture so now the people who are buying cameras are looking for more sophisticated advanced cameras because they want to be serious photographers. But the other side of our business is still printing pictures. We have a whole uh, about a third of our whole business building is designed to help people print pictures either off their cell phone, which some people find that difficult to do, and we make big wall murals and enlargements. We help people decorate their offices with photography. Um, so we do everything from helping people make print snapshots to printing pictures on metal or on stone or on fabric so that they can end up with a really cool picture that's meaningful for them in their life. One reason this little camera store has been able to stay open so long is because Wolf's has always valued the customer before a profit. So whenever the customer is troubled by making how to make a decision, that's when we see our opening to do something beyond our photo technology. So if you have the ability to be offering something new and different, then you have a chance to get customers to come back more frequently and make your business be more successful. Recently, there has been a rumor that has been going around that Wolf's could be closing in the near future. Well, I am uh, getting, I, I'm not getting mature necessarily, but I'm getting older. Mm -hmm. And at some point, I'm going to not want to be in the camera business anymore. Yeah. And at this point, I um, don't see anybody to take over the business. And so at, at some point, we will either change our format um, and maybe we'll go to an all-internet business with fewer employees. But we definitely don't need this big retail space to do a substantial amount of the business that we are doing today. People can actually buy cameras and other equipment from Wolf's online instead of coming into the store. Today, uh, about half our business is transacted online. We actually have 
uh, two websites, just wolfs.com is one of them. We're also an active seller on Amazon. So uh, you can, people from all across the country are buying from us on Amazon. Mike Warswick, the owner of Wolf's Camera, says the future of his store is unknown. You, that's, that's why it's so hard to say. People will say, well, are you going out of business? And the answer is probably. Well, when? You know, I don't know. Um, and so all of that just has to flow and then we'll eventually figure it out. And the same thing will apply to Reliant Apparel and to the floral shop. It's possible that we could be gone in 2020 it's also possible we could be here in 2022. So we'll just have to start exploring the options once they become options and figure out what's gonna happen next. No matter the future of the store, Wolf's Camera is still happy on how long they've been able to serve the little town of Topeka. You know, we've just been proud to be part of Topeka for 96 years. And we feel like we've served the community very well all this time. And we, uh, we don't want people to um, stop making pictures and uh, if people have been putting off projects uh, where they would like our help, they ought to just get busy and come see us and let us help them while we're still here um, because I, you know, I just can't accurately predict how long that's going to be. But I can say safely here in February that it's at least several months away and could be well more than several months. If you'd like to visit Wolf's camera, they'll be able to help you with all your camera needs. For our next story, coffee is usually shared with two or more people and a conversation. One coffee house is particularly taking this conversation to the next level. Coffee and friends make a perfect blend. That's what this one local coffee house thrives off of. Caitlin Halsey, a Washburn Rural graduate, created a spot where people of all abilities are welcomed and celebrated. Um, it started when I was in high school. Um, I volunteered um, in the special education department and um, with Special Olympics and that kind of thing. Um, and so just like getting to know the community um, really well and then seeing a need for employment I just kind of decided to start a business and um, coffee in particular because coffee um, is universal and so everybody it's for everyone and not just a specific group of people. 80% um, of our employees have an intellectual or developmental disability and then um, the other 20 are considered the neurotypical individuals. I'm a I'm a chef. I'm the baker, and I do a lot of the baking, like all like breads, cookies, and all the baked goods. All the friends you get to meet, everybody's friendly. Yeah, I just want everybody in the community to see that um, these people want to live life just like you and me, and um, they want to find purpose in employment and um, have the opportunities that everybody else is given. My favorite thing is just seeing our regular customers come in and call our employees by name. Um, I think when we're called by name, um, we're just given this like joy that we're known. We have a few employees who love to have dance parties, <laughs> so that's always fun to just um, have fun while at work. One worker of the coffee house is a Seaman High senior. Brooke Sumner has worked at Dialogue since it opened last April. Her favorite thing about the job is... Make good friends, too. Um, I would love to just see more community support, um, just having people come in and build those um, connections with our employees has really um, been awesome to see, and so I would just love to see that grow. And then um, on the business side, we hope to expand with catering. And that Dialogue allows people, whether disabled or able, to join together to make differences disappear. You can find them on Facebook at Dialogue Coffee House. That is all for tonight for our fourth episode of Saga. We've covered many different ideas and themes of cool. 
Tune in next month for new stories and new themes. Thank you for watching.